Hello, my name is François Aurea. I'm the NanoSIMS project manager at Chemica in Gennevilliers, France. I will uh, describe in this part one the instrumentation principle. There is another webinar to illustrate these, uh, the main capabilities of the NanoSIMS, and there are other webinars uh, more for specific applications. So let's start with the basics of SIMS, secondary ion mass spectrometry. First, the sample is put into a ultra high vacuum chamber to avoid any recontamination from the surface. Um, it means that biological samples need to be dehydrated before analysis. The samples are bombarded by a beam of primary ion of a few kV impact energy. And as a microprobe technique, the resolution, the lateral resolution, will be determined directly by the spot size. So if the spot size on the nanometer seam can be 50 nanometer, it means the lateral resolution is 50 nanometer. A collision cascade occur uh, around 20 nanometer depth on the nanoseams. And during this process, simultaneously, implantation sputtering will occur. And the signal itself that we can collect, secondary ions, are ejected from the top surface, one or two, three top atomic monolayer. So this is a, one of the most surfacic analysis techniques. It is, by nature, destructive, so we can uh, record depth information. Only a small fraction of the material sputtered is ionized in positive or negative charge. These ions are available for mass spectrometry. They are collected by a strong electrostatic field. One of the key points of the SIMS is to use reactive primary ions to enhance and maximize the probability to convert an atom from the sample into an ion. So we use oxygen beam for enhancing electropositive elements, and we use cesium primary ion beam to enhance electronegative species. So the secondary ions that are representative of the surface composition are collected and then mass analyzed in a magnetic sector analyzer. And we will be able to make elemental analysis from hydrogen and isotopic analysis. The information we can get from the instrument is 1D, depth profile, line profiles, 2D images, or 3D stack of images over the depth. Dynamic SIMS is the most sensitive surface analysis method for most elements. Here in this slide, we can see the relative sensitivity of different elements analyzed in SIMS when analyzing silicon, so the matrix is silicon, and we, we detect implanted species in silicon, bombarding with oxygen primary beam, oxygen primary ions. We detect positive secondary ion, and in this table, the highest sensitivity are at the bottom. So it's a reversed table. So what we see in this table is that there are some elements at the bottom that are ionizing extremely well. So we nearly have a full ionization. Each atom nearly gives um, a, secondary, a secondary ion. So that's extre extremely good for SIMS sensitivity. At the opposite, 
on the top of the graph, we see rare gases that are nearly not ionized at all. So it's not efficient at all. We also see some elements, electronegative species, that are not well ionized. You notice that the scale in X is in logarithmic scale. So it's a, it's a huge difference between different elements. So what in this case for these electronegative species, we will bombard with cesium. And then the very low sensitivity elements, positive, will become very sensitive in negative ionization. So we can cover more or less all the periodic table with an extreme sensitivity if we adapt the primary to the species to detect. Nevertheless, um, there are some, uh, we break nearly all molecules on the surface, but nevertheless, we can collect and create a few small molecular ions. Like, for example, uh, to detect nitrogen in a silicon matrix, we would detect SIN minus in order to have good sensitivity on nitrogen or in a uh, section, um, section for TEM, we can detect CN if the polymer embedding uh, polymer is uh, full of carbon, then nitrogen is well ionizing as a CN minus ion, whereas N minus or N plus are very weak. There are only a few elements on the nanosims that are not accessible, rare gases, and a few specific elements that are not good in positive or negative. The um, mercury is one of them, and zinc and cadmium. But the other are give extremely good sensitivity. Let's see the concept of the instrument. First, the nanosims is an ion microprobe. It means a focused beam of primary ion that we scan pixel by pixel. So, first we choose primary ions between two ion sources, cesium or oxygen. We focus the beam on the sample. And here is the first characteristic of the nanosims. The final objective lens is used to do two jobs. First, it will focus the beam, primary beam, into a small spot. And to do this in the optimized condition, it is positioned extremely near the sample, 300 microns apart the sample. So a short working distance giving a good beam density. This normal incidence is also used for the collection of the secondary ions. So the collection of the secondary ion is done with a strong electrostatic field with a short distance and through the same lens, we have nearly a 100% collection of emitted ions. The secondary ion beam is then shaped and injected into an electromagnet. This matog herzog geometry is incorporated seven detectors. One is fixed at the highest radius. The six other trolley are mobile under vacuum and can be equipped with electron multiplier or Faraday cup or First step, we must know which elements or ions to measure. So this is a research instrument. It is not optimized for failure analysis, for example, where you do not know what you are looking for. Here you must know before the analysis which ions to follow. Then you take the heaviest ion of interest and ask the computer to adjust the magnetic field in order to put these heaviest ions into the fixed 
a detector at the largest radius. When this is done, the magnetic field is locked with the NMR probe, and the six other trawlers are moved automatically to their position. Keeping the magnetic field fixed, we then scan with a small electrostatic plate just before the exit slit. We scan the beam across the exit slit to record a high mass resolving power mass spectrum at each single mass that has been selected. So you see on this screen four mass spectra on carbon 12, one peak, carbon 13, ah, you see two peaks, carbon 13, but also carbon 12H. So this means that you need to have a good mass resolving power to separate both peaks. At mass 26, CN minus, used to detect nitrogen in carbon-rich matrix, we see two peaks. On mass 27, we see four peaks. And here we can mention the second strong point of the nanosims, a high mass resolving power capability together with a sen good sensitivity. So you see the Y scale is in logarithmic scale. So what you see is the, the quality, you see peaks, mass peaks, that are very sharp. Their edge is very steep, as you can see, over several decades. And with this, you can be sure not to be bothered by mass interferences. Once you have these spectra, you click with a mouse and define which masses you will image without the mass interference from nearby peaks. We start the ion beam scanning, pixel by pixel, and thus we record in parallel seven mass filtered images, all perfectly registered so that we will be able to do ratio, pixel ratio, that will give us extremely precise measurements. It is possible then to repeat the scanning as many times as we want in order to penetrate progressively in the depth of the sample. Each image, depending on the setting, will remove a few tenths to a few nanometers of the sample thickness. And thus, we record a stack of images so um, a stack of 2D images making a 3D information. Here you see the a cell that is laying on the substrate and progressively we penetrate inside the cell, sputtering its surface, and we reach the nucleus. Now it's possible to divide one image pixel by pixel by another image. So the nitrogen 15 divided by the nitrogen 14 image, we will obtain an isotopic ratio image. So this is the image, a zoom on the nucleus that we see. And if I zoom even further, I see each pixel. And in each pixel, I have nitrogen 15 signal, nitrogen 14 signal, and the isotopic ratio. So then I can compare with a standard, maybe a natural standard and see the local enrichment. Here is the synopsis of the nanosims. So, the first thing to do is to load the sample, the clean sample, into a small chamber, the load lock, that we will pump down with a turbo molecular pump. And once the vacuum is low enough, we will open a valve and transfer the sample 
the 50 millimeter diameter sample holder into the storage chamber where you can store eight of these sample holders. And you pump down with an uh, iron pump. Then uh, you wait and once the vacuum is good enough, you will open the valves between the storage chamber and the analysis chamber and you will transfer the sample into the analysis chamber. The vacuum here is extremely good uh, with iron pump and titanium sublimator pump reaching down to the minus 11 millibar uh, vacuum range. So it will be time to uh, visualize the sample with an optical microscope. So you have a microscope a few millimeters above the sample, the analysis position, visualizing a 700 by 700 field of view. You can travel and choose your analytical position. Once this is done, you start, or you have already you select one of the two ion sources, oxygen for electropositive ion or cesium for electronegative ions. You will focus your beam and adjust the beam current and the beam size between, let's say, 50 nanometer at best and 5 microns for the highest current and bombard and scan over the sample. So the first very specific point of the nanotimes is its immersion and focusing lens. So this objective lens is very near the sample, 300 microns apart only. And so short distance allowing a very early and very effective collection of the few secondary ions that are emitted. Second characteristic, uh, it's a normal incidence geometry. So the beam comes normal to the sample without any shadowing for rough samples. And the secondary ion beam is extracted through the same normal incidence angle. So it's a coaxial focusing and extracting lens. So this is a really the first unique um, capability or characteristic of the nanosims. So the secondary ions are collected, focused, and injected in a magnetic sector, mass analyzer. One of the characteristics of the nanosims, so the second characteristic of it, is that it has a large ratio radius of magnet versus entrance slit. That will, well, it's a simplification view, but it allows a very good mass absorbing power while keeping here on the nanosims a very good transmission, very high sensitivity. So, then there is a multi-collection mass magnetic mass spectrometer. So for seven mass in parallel with electron or Faraday cap. And why a parallel detector is required is because this instrument is pushing the limits of SIMS resolution, spatial resolution. So if you analyze the very tiny uh, detail on the sample, let's say a particle of 10 nanometer. If you have a mono collection, you will analyze the first mass, let's say hydrogen. And when you want to detect the second mass, let's say deuterium, uh, there is no more particle because it has been all sputtered. So as soon as you want to push the spatial resolution to analyze small objects, you need a parallel detection to collect and measure all the ions of interest in parallel. You will not have a second chance to analyze uh, these tiny particles because of the destructive nature of SIMS. We will see in the next slide some more detail on the multi-collection. So, in the multi-collection of the nanosims 50L, you have one fixed detector at the highest radius and six mobile detectors can move under vacuum. We can 
select in each prolet one detector, electron multiplier or Faraday cup, or both that can be exchangeable, switched under vacuum. We use electron multiplier for imaging and Faraday cup for the highest isotopic reproducibility. But the Faraday cup have a too large time constant to be capable to do fast imaging. The large uh, radius uh, ratio is obtained with a matok herzog geometry. So it's a, a focal plane analyzer with a minimum radius of 140 millimeter and a maximum radius of 680 millimeter. So the mass range depends on the maximum mass that you want to measure. And this you will do by adjusting the magnetic field uh, in the electromagnet. So once you have selected the magnetic field, so the big field is adjusted, you have a ratio between the minimum accessible mass up to the maxi maximum accessible mass. It would be a ratio of 22. For example, you can put hydrogen on the smallest radius, you will reach maximum 22 AMU. Or you can select, change the magnetic field, and you will be able to collect elements from boron 11 up to 11 multiplied by 22, 242 AMU. So with a ratio. Uh, the second parameter to remember is the minimum mass interval. As you can see in the detectors in the center, they are very near, and they have a, a fixed uh, mechanical width. And this limits the distance, the minimum distance between two mass lines. So this uh, limitation is given by M max divided by 58. So what does it mean? It means that up to the mass 58, you can detect one ion at each single mass. For example, 52 together with 53 and together with 54 AMU. But if you ask for mass 80, ah, you, will be, you will have a mass interval of two masses. For example, you will be able to detect 80 together with 82 together with 84. If you ask for 140, ah, it will be three masses minimum interval, 140, 43, 46. So uh, if you wish to detect 141, uh, there are two solutions, whether you move the trolley or you change the magnetic field. We can use both uh, capability. So whether we uh, do multi-collection uh, imaging, of seven masses in parallel, for example, or we can do magnetic field, big jumping. So we de use one detector and we commute the magnetic field, or we can combine both. We can combine trolley movements and magnetic field. Uh, switching. It's quite flex flexible uh, for the analysis. Here is a view of the complete nanosims with its electronic racks and its control desk. So let's recap the three main points of the nanosims. At this point, the use of reactive primary ion to enhance ionization, so cesium plus for electronegative species and oxygen minus for electropositive species. And the beam can be focused and adjusted from between 50 nanometer and say five micron with a variable primary beam current. Second point, it includes a multi-collection, magnetic sector analyzer of matog herzog geometry, incorporating seven detectors that can be equipped with Faraday cup or electron multiplier or both. Third point, 
the nanoseams as the unique feature to combine three elements together, so sensitivity, high mass resolution, and small spot size. Generally, on most instruments, you will miss one or two parameters. Mounting the sample in the nanoseams is quite easy, except the sample must be flat because the sample is very near the objective lens. So sections of tissues embedded in resin, for example, as we can see on the right side, are um, deposited flat on a silicon wafer, for example, and they are analyzed directly, provided that they can sustain a ultra high vacuum. So all samples must be free of oils or water. Now we can zoom on the load lock in which we load this 50 millimeter sample holder. When we close, we pump with a turbo pump. We can even degas with a lamp inside the load lock before introducing into the storage chamber with the transfer rod. The storage chamber is very practical for, um, very useful for keeping standards or uh, other samples under good environment and let them degas, especially when we are looking for atmospheric elements. Most of the example that will be shown uh, after that are taken from scientific publications. So if you are interested in this, uh, you might go to our website, chemica.com, uh, go to SIMS, then uh, NanoSIMS, and then uh, scientific publication. From there, you can download a table, an Excel spreadsheet that you might use uh, to uh, localize the, your uh, paper of interest. It's very easy to filter by names or by uh, different parameters that are available in the table. The nanosims, by the way, is the instrument at Chemica with the largest field of application. Let's conclude. The nanosims 50L is a unique magnetic sector sims microprobe with parallel collection of seven selectable adjustable masses and a coaxial near-length geometry. This concept enables SIMS analysis at sub-micron scale, down to 50 nanometer laterally and 20 or 10, 20 nanometer in depth, combining simultaneously high lateral resolution, exceptional sensitivity, and high mass resolving power. So as a teaser for the next uh, webinar, uh, we can say that it enables trace element, not only high concentration element, but trace element and isotopic ratio, high resolution mapping of most elements. So from uh, hydrogen, atmospheric species, lithium, up to plutonium and higher. From flat, dehydrated solid samples, this research instrument is used in a very large diversity of application fields. Thank you for your attention.